racing down the highway, having me some fun. Cop pulled me over, said, boy, what have you done? I said, I killed old Jack Daniels and I left him there to die. Now if you don't mind, I'd show like to get high, he said. Son, you're in trouble, I'm gonna take you in. I said, you do what you gotta do, then I started to grin, he said. What's so funny, boy, I said, sound like a country song to me. Right, good morning, welcome back. Okay, let's get these wheels fitted in the bike. The first task is gonna be the front wheel. I've gotta make some spacers so that it sits aligned between the forks absolutely correctly. But I can't do it without the disc fitted. I've gotta fit the disc onto the wheel because I have a solidly mounted caliper. So therefore the disc can only go in one place and no other place. So I've gotta use the disc as the alignment tool, which is the easiest possible way. So let's get the disc fitted to the wheel first, then we can pop it in the bike and see whether it lines up anywhere near right. That side. Right, as a couple of you guys have already said, you're gonna order these wheels for your bikes. I just wanna give you this as well. If you've got, you're gonna put your existing discs onto the new wheels, make sure that when you order them, check the size of the hub. Now the hub in this case for this wheel is a 50 mil diameter across there. That's the section of the hub that comes up through the disc and locates it. And that on this instance, on my Harley, on this wheel rather, is 50 mil, which is the same as a rear wheel. But this is a front, application i'm using this what is effectively a rear hub on the front to get it wide enough and that means my front disc which is a 330 mil brembo disc that really belongs on a ducati monster or something that means i've got this 56 mil hole here in the center and that 56 mil hole is too big for the 50 mil hub but if you're going to order them yourself just make sure you also order a spacer that's all it is it's a precision cut machined aluminium spacer that they sell on the website. They're not mega cheap, but they are a precision item. They're absolutely correct. It's not just a washer. That goes over your 50 mil hub, nice and snug, and then you can put your 56 mil disc on. So if you're gonna order a pair of these wheels for yourself, guys, make sure you order the right spacer if your disc is too big. Just measure the hole in your front disc. If it's 56, order the spacer with it, so it'll be straight on when it comes. Very pretty disc and wheel combination. Okay, let's get on with it. Right, that's it in place. Now, when I tested this in the last video, it was a little bit too far to the left as you sit on the bike, but not by much. I'm thinking just a fraction, it needs to come just across to the right slightly. The factory spacers just aren't putting it in the right place. So what I'm gonna do is use these. I'm gonna get some washers. These are just, oh, finger stuck. These are just old washers. 17 mil inside diameter hole, so they'll go nicely over the axle with a little bit of space. Now I'm not putting in enough washers at this point to actually wedge the wheel solid. I wanna just put some in to pack out the spare slack so I can fine tune it and move it exactly. And then I've got a cunning trick said to be yesterday by one of you guys that I'm gonna to do to get that fine tuning exact. So let's get these in first. Get the axle in this side. Just put a couple of washers on each side just to pack out the, the bulk of the space. There we go. There we are, just a couple this side. So just do it up gently, just so everything seats and the axle itself is completely set with the shoulder on the axle doing its job and in the right place and then we know what space we need. I've got 
just a couple of washers down in there in the space of the original spacer and the same goes this side focus in just a couple of washers in there and the, the gap there the, the spare space leaves me room it's coming out it leaves me room to move the wheel side to side and fine-tune the spacing or positioning of the wheel and we do that with the brake caliper so let's chuck the caliper on and line it up with the disc just nip them up you don't have to be talked up or anything all right there we are now at that point I've got a little bit of side float in that and because the pads are still in there and the pistons and the caliper are all still working normally I can initially use the brake lever to center that because the pistons are all free moving on these calipers if you apply the brakes pump them up so that the pads come out the pads will come out equally and they will touch the disc and hold it central and then I can check it on the center line of the caliper so just a few pumps on this There we are. Right. Now I've got the pads out on the disc. Nothing binding, in fact. It's binding on the lip. Right, there we go. There. That's it. Centralised on the pads. Now let's visually check what it looks like underneath, which is the only visual vantage point that I've got to see if that disc is lined up perfectly with the caliper. Right, bringing you in, close as I can. Grab that shot there. That's the disc, caliper. Caliper comes in two halves, and this is the join between those two halves. And if you just check, the disc there is perfectly aligned with the join in the two halves of the caliper, meaning the disc is sitting right in the middle of the caliper. Okay, so with that aligned absolutely perfectly now, I know the wheel's in the dead right place, the disc sits bang on in the centre of the caliper, everything's lined up correctly. All I've got to do now, quite simple, is make spaces to pack out those gaps. Measure them first, and the easiest way to do that is with the washers. I've got some washers in there to pack out most of the space, and in the past what I would have done, took the axle out, stick another one in either side and keep packing, keep doing that in and out, caliper on and off, on and off until I get it absolutely right and that can take half a day and you can scratch your caliper, scratch your wheel rim and scratch your fork leg as I've done many times in the past because it's just loads of it, you get slapdash and eventually you get it right but there's always a cost but not today. One of you sent me a fantastic suggestion just yesterday on Facebook, I'm going to do that now so we get the grinder out, got to modify a few of these and I'll show you the simplest way on earth of packing out that space to the exact right size so that I don't have to take this wheel out again. I'm going to pack those gaps out without removing the wheel. I'll show you what this suggestion was. Washers. Watch. Go. This is a brilliant suggestion by somebody on Facebook called Bonzo. Thank you, sir. You know who you are. That is absolute common sense in the extreme. I love that. Why I didn't think of it, I don't know. I have faffed about for hours in the past, taking axles out, putting them back in again when I just should have done that. <laughs> oh, can I have those hours back, please? Right, now all we've got to do is slot them in, pack out that remaining space until it's correct, and each side is nice and the alignment is still where it should be. Then wrap a little bit of tape around them to hold them all into one piece, take the axle out, and then go and cut them on the lathe. Easy, isn't it? Right, there we are. That's my right spacer, that's my left spacer. Just gotta go and cut them. Now, 
哈。
And here what we're looking for, this join between the two caliber halves, lining up perfectly with the groove in the middle of the disc. Bang on spacing. One final point to make. A few people have mentioned that the tire is on the wrong way round. I get this every single time. This tire is fitted correctly. The tread faces effectively backwards when viewed from the top. And that is the correct rotation. I can assure you to anybody who doubts it, there is the arrow for wheel rotation. That's the wheel rotating forward. So let's put it to bed, the tire is fitted correctly. Okay, there we go. A long day, but a fruitful day. Really happy with the outcome of that. Worked to nice tight tolerances, 0 0.02 of a millimeter larger than they were. If that makes sense, what's 0 0.02 of a millimeter? 0 0.02 of a millimeter. I'm happy with that tolerance. The wheel fits in perfectly. That disc is bang on where it should be in the caliper and everything fits and works nicely. Happy to sign the front wheel off. Not quite, I've got to paint this little bracket here, so take that off. Same as the rear one, the bracket that holds the caliper. I've got to put the disc on the rear wheel next, get that alignment correct as I did with this one. And if it is and that wheel is perfectly aligned, then there's a big fat spacer on the rear that currently is all corroded and horrible. That won't do, so I'll make a stainless steel one of those, even if it has to be the same size. And while I'm doing it, if there is a little misalignment, I get a chance to make it bang on and get the same result as this. So there we are. After that wheel's done at the back, then it's paintwork time because I can paint that and the rear caliper bracket at the same time. Once all that paintwork's done and all this paintwork here, I can start throwing it all back together. And that really is exciting. So there we are. Thank you for watching. Take it easy. Ride safe. See you next time. Well, I was racing down the highway, having me some fun. Cop pulled me over and said, boy, what have you done? I said, I killed old Jack Daniel.